Changemakers is a movement created by the Manny Canner Center, engaging New Yorkers to take action. I'm Eden Perlove with the America 101 Project. With my co-founder, Lily Nussbaum, we created the America 101 Project out of a desire to learn more about timely topics from the people who know them intimately and can share a unique perspective. A former ballet dancer, Amy Lehman, is the Director of Legal Services at Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts. Sparked by her desire to help other artists, Amy went to law school and studied copyright, trademark, and media law at the University of Michigan School of Law. Amy is a member of the Entertainment Law Committee of the New York City Bar Association and is a trained mediator with extensive experience working with VLA in Mediate Arts program and is on a panel of mediators assigned to resolve cases for the Southern District of New York. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, VLA's work? So um, I uh, am actually uh, a litigator as an attorney. I, I graduated from the University of Michigan and I, I went into practice of law at law firms as a litigator for about 10 years. Um, prior to all of that, I actually started my career as an artist. So I had a, an honest interest in helping artists when I decided to go to law school after I retired from my first career. I actually then went to college, got a degree in theater history and dramatic literature, and then I worked in the theater industry for several years before law school. So by the time I went to law school, my, I knew that when I graduated, I would want to volunteer with VLA. And, um, and that's what I did. The first thing I did when I got out of law school and started working was also volunteer with VLA. So um, 10 years later, I ended up working for VLA full-time as the director of legal services. So I'm very lucky in that respect. Um, and so what VLA does, Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts in New York does, is provide pro bono services for um, low-income artists and nonprofit organizations um, for whatever their legal needs are in relation to their art. So if someone comes to us who needs help uh, registering a trademark or they have they believe that someone's infringing on their copyright or they are worried that they might be infringing on someone's copyright or they need advice about um, you know, non-payment or some other kind of a dispute or immigration services or and it could be just about anything as long as it's related to their art. Um, we also provide ongoing educational programming which we now have 100% online. Um, normally we do them as live classes at our at our facility on, a, on East 53rd Street, but now everything is up as webinars and um, are also being kept up as on demand as well, which is very helpful. Um, so uh, in addition to that, we also do legal ad advocacy. If a case is coming through uh, the legal system, um, for example, there, there have been cases that go to Supreme Court. VLA has written amicus briefs for. We just did an amicus brief last year for a case in the Eastern District of Virginia, which was a copyright litigation. Um, in which a photographer's uh, photograph had been used by, by another entity without their permission, and it went through both the district court and then up to the, to the circuit court in, in the Eastern District, so, or actually in the Fourth Circuit, um, uh, which is in Virginia. So uh, when we are able to do that kind of ad advocacy, we also do that. What does pro bono mean and why is it so important? So uh, what pro bono means is that it's, um, essentially un, unpaid for the attorneys. So the, the attorneys are doing this as volunteers. The clients are not paying for the service. So they have an attorney who will work for them for free. Um, it doesn't mean that everything is free. Uh, the attorneys will not charge their hourly rate. But if, for example, a case is in litigation, there will still be litigation costs, out-of-pocket costs that the clients have to pay for. But ultimately, um, when attorneys work pro bono, they're doing it because um, it's good thing to do. It's uh, ethically appropriate for them to do that. And it's also in New York State, it's a requirement that all attorneys do some level of pro bono work every year. Um, and uh, even before they, they get their license now, they're required to have 50 hours of pro bono work. So it's part of, part of being a lawyer now. What sort of work are you doing to help artists and cultural institutions? You know, my description of what VLA does generally it really covers that. So uh, we work with individual artists. We work with with nonprofit organizations. We work with artists who want to create nonprofit organizations or their own LLCs. Um, and so we find them attorneys to to work with them to help make that happen. So um, whether someone is an individual or it's a you know uh, an institution. 
uh, itself, um, we'll do what we can to find them a pro, a pro bono attorney to work with them. Generally, the large institutions are not ones that, that come to us because they need free legal services, but we do have relationships with them. Um, I actually just had a call with, uh, or I'm about to have a call with the, uh, a large um, museum where um, they're interested in collaborating on some educational programming. So we might do something like that. Um, and and we have a we have a relationship with a with a large nonprofit theater as well, which um, in which we have worked with them to help educate their in-house counsel on on some issues that they weren't familiar with as well. So so we find whatever way that we can to work with whatever the institutions actually need. What are some of the more pressing issues that you see artists or cultural institutions are often facing? You know, our artists are always facing number one to me, the issue that they're facing is that they didn't get um, any education uh, growing up in their, in whatever uh, arts education that they got, they didn't get education on business. So they didn't learn anything about copyright or trademark or, you know, negotiating a, a contract or what even a contract, you know, the terms of a contract are and what they mean. And so, because they didn't get that education in their in their schooling, whether in high school or undergrad or even in, in higher education, they end up out in the world finding themselves in need of information about this or in need of help because they've found themselves in trouble. So um, our goal and our mission is to help them first deal with the, the issue at hand, whether it's any of those things, whether it's, you know, um, understanding a music license, for example, or in on the other end of things, um, you know, trying to negotiate or, and get royalties that haven't been paid for years and years and that kind of thing for musicians, for example. Um, and also to provide the educational program that, programming that helps them avoid the situation in advance. And that's that's really the, the intention of, of that. How has COVID affected VLA's work? <laughs> just like everyone, um, COVID has affected us in that we are also working from home. Um, we normally have an office of seven full-time staff and seven to 10 or seven to 15 interns, depending on the time of the year from law schools. We have law school interns who work with us. And so now everybody is working from home. Um, you know, the, it makes it challenging to, you know, for us to supervise the interns, but, you know, we're working to find them assignments that make it a valuable uh, experience for them in any case. Um, and then also, you know, in working with our clients, we can't have them come in for consultations or clinics. We have to do it all remotely, either by phone or by Zoom. Um, and so uh, it's just a slightly different world we're all living in. And, and, you know, that's on the sort of global level, but then also, you know, the clients are coming to us with very different problems than they had. We still have our general um, ordinary problems that people come to us with, but uh, in addition to that, we had to create an expedited uh, COVID track for clients who are sort of in an urgent emergency situation, and they can't wait to go through the normal uh, sort of long intake process to get to seeing a lawyer. So we've, we've developed entirely new programming um, for the legal services side of things and entirely new programming for the educational side. We've done uh, webinars on uh, how to apply for unemployment, on how to apply for the PPP and SBA grants, on real estate issues in, in the world of COVID, which is a big problem for many, many people, um, on immigration issues, on how to understand contracts and enforce majeure clauses and things like that. So we've done very quickly, we've gotten a lot of programming up just related to that issue. And those are all free classes for people to see. They can go to our website and, and find them on demand. Um, and then if they have a specific COVID related matter um, and they come to us, they will be speeded through the process to help find them uh, an attorney to speak to about, about their problem. How has going virtual affected the work of your clients? Well, you know, I think that's a really interesting question. And in fact, we have, a, we have another program coming up on June 3rd uh, about going remote um, as, as for individuals and for, for nonprofits in particular, you know, whatever your obligations and what do you have to think about when you're, when you go try to try to promote your business online or do your work online, you know, and it's very difficult for example, for, you know, performing artists. If your world revolves around performing live 
to an audience, everything has come to a crashing halt now. And so people are being very creative about finding ways to do, you know, Zoom calls with everybody who would be in the cast or would be in the orchestra performing together. Um, but you know, that's challenging because then how do you charge for that? And then when everybody's not working, how do you ask people to pay? And, and so it's become, um, just a, a world of unknowns and you know trying to help them navigate all of that is is really a, that's a challenge it's a big challenge so not just for for us but for all of our clients what kind of helpful tools are in place or maybe out there for institutions or artists that they might not know about right so we actually one of the first things that we did when all of this happened is we, we put up a new page on our website for other resources, we have an other resources page normally, but we have a COVID resources page now, um, which has links to um, you know all kinds of other organizations and entities that are providing grants and services and healthcare information and other legal services information. So you know there might be people who come to us who who they might not qualify as artists. They might not be artists. They just thought, oh look, COVID. We'll see what we can do we'll send them to another legal services organization that works with non-artists. Um, we have a lot of recent, there's a, there's a lot of information out there on, you know, from the actors from, from, from the musicians skills, from the other, you know, uh, industry related entities that are providing information and services. So we have links to those, their websites and their information and to grant funding organizations as well. So. If we want to get involved, how can we help from home? Um, well, that's a wonderful question. Um, because we're providing legal services, we really rely on attorneys to volunteer with us. So any, any uh, you know, New York licensed attorneys who are out there or Connecticut or New Jersey who um, are, you know, interested in volunteering, we're always looking for more volunteers. We are also a nonprofit organization, so we also rely on donations. So if anybody is looking for an, a charity to donate to, we are a qualified charity. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, um, I'm really not sure other ways that that uh, non attorneys can can help from home. But um, you know, I think it's for artists themselves. The I think the best way that you can help yourselves that would help us is to to become as educated as possible about about whatever the issues are that you that you didn't get education in when you were in college. Um, that you know. It's very important for artists to realize that that it's a business that you know they they talk about the entertainment business, but nobody talks about the arts being a business. It really is. And as artists, whether you're a painter or uh, a performer or a musician or you know who's also a performer, but um, or any other kind of artist, you know even digital media artists, any anything, um, if you are doing it as a as a career, then it's a business. And so it's important to to do your best to learn about, about how you can protect yourself. And of course, that's why we're here. Um, and it helps us if you do your best to learn about that um, so that when we are providing legal services and helping you with whatever it is your issue is, that, that you also are able to sort of think through it with us and work with us together. This was super enlightening. I, I really appreciate it. I'm so glad. And, and we're here, we're, we're, we're working. We're looking forward to hearing from anybody who needs help. 